Hey everybody, so today I'll be giving you a quick introduction into inserting images into a graph file. Um, currently, I will just be focusing on the normal GNU graph implementation, heirloom graph and other, ver or heirloom trough and other versions of trough um, use a different form of inputting images, but for right now, I'm just going to focus on the graph images. So, something that's worth mentioning is that there's really only two ways as of right now to input images into a uh, graph. So you can either have a postscript file, which is what this one right here is, or you can use a PDF. So if you're using a postscript file, you use PSPIC, so uh, PSPIC, and then you would just give it an image. All right, but that image has to be a postscript file. If you want to use a PDF file, which you can also use, you can do dot PDF pick. Um, and do the same thing. Something to know for PDF pick is that currently you will need to either give it the dimensions of the actual PDF or you will have to um, use graph with the unsafe mode, which allows it to call um, PDF info, which is just a separate program that will find the dimensions for you. Um, I personally recommend to just stick with PS pick because converting things to PostScript is not really that difficult, and I'll go over how to convert everything over in a bit, right after I just go over this. Um, so right now we have a file right here. Actually, let's just, let's just compile this and give you guys a quick look at it. So this is what the file looks like. Um, if I just open, so this is what the PostScript file looks like. It's just a screenshot that I took at some point earlier. And here is it inside of our graph file. So let's just, so here's some text around it so you guys can get a bit better of a reference for it. Um, and so for PS pick, this stuff will all kind of apply to PDF pick and PostScript pick, but sadly PDF pick can be a bit harder to work with. So that's why I recommend that you guys try to use PostScript pick if you can. Um, if everybody's really interested in going into PDF pick in more detail, let me know in the comments and I will go over it in a future video. So after postscript pick, you can actually give it an extra argument, which is where you want it to align. So we can do L to left align it, um, and R to right align it, and a C to center it. And I think by default it centers it, I'm pretty sure. And then after that you can give dimensions. So we can do one I for one inch. That was the width, and this is the height. If you guys actually go to where PS pick is defined, you can actually see everything here, so just in case I missed anything. So yeah, actually, here's something I missed is uh, the dash i for indentation, um, which I guess I'll actually show you right now. So just i, and then we have to give it an indentation. Let's just go one inch. You can change the indentation. Um, that's actually pretty useful. I'm surprised I don't use that more often, actually, now that I'm thinking of it. But anyway, so you can change your indentation. Um, we'll just leave the indentation as it is. And so this is changes our width. So we can increase that. And it will make our text wider. Um, and increase it more and it'll make it wider. And then you also have the height. So you can do three inches is how high you want it to be. And so when you guys see, it doesn't actually stretch our text, but what you will notice is that it actually takes up more space. So if I let's add So if I add this text after the image, now you'll see that it's there. And if we decrease this height, it should lower it. So and then the same goes for like the width. So if I decrease the width, it's basically just telling it basically just tells graph how wide and how big this image is on top of the actual size of it. Um, and so this can be pretty powerful if you have say something that you would like to crop, you can usually work with these to try and basically shrink how small graph thinks the image is. But you'll see that it doesn't work with PDFs, um, which can be kind of annoying, but actually um, even though you see this, if you guys look, this is actually as it says up here in my title bar, this is actually a PDF that we're looking at. So it can actually output to PDFs. It's just, it can't directly output to PDFs. So what I use is I use PDF ROF for this. And then, 
Um, I can use dash ms. It takes pretty much all the same arguments that normal graph does, except except for dash capital T, because it knows it has to output to a PDF file. And so if I do this and I pipe that to, oh, I forgot the actual file. There we go. And you'll see that it outputs it as a PDF. So I'm sure you're probably wondering, how am I going to get my current images that I have or any images I take in the future as PostScript files? And basically what you're gonna do, um, basically what you're gonna use to convert is you're gonna use a program called ImageMagic, or at least that's what I use. You guys can use whatever you want, but I find ImageMagic is the best option. And you probably already have it installed. Um, in addition, you'll also need GhostScript, so ImageMagic, so right here. And then GhostScript, which is an optional dependency. If we look at the manual page for ImageMagic, you'll see that it supports a ton of different formats out there um, that you can convert between. Uh, you can do a lot of different stuff. You can edit your images, you can invert them. I use that actually quite a lot when I have a black background in an image and I want it to blend in better with my PDF file. Because you can do convert, which is one of the most common um, commands that you can do with image magic. You can convert any image into a PostScript file using it. So right here I have um, just this little confused emoji image right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use convert. Let's do confused face large. Let's go. So then I'm going to basically convert it. So this goes convert. We say the final destination and then uh, at the very end, we say what it's going to convert to. So we do EPS because we want to convert it to a PostScript file. Um, and then we run it just like that. And now, if I just open this, oh, it was just an alias for XDG open, we'll see that I have it as its own PostScript image. It looks kind of weird just because it's so zoomed in and the image is already a pretty low uh, image quality already. But what we're going to do now, so we have this PostScript image, so let's do, go back to our test file. So back at our test file, um, let's just get rid of all this. Let's do fused face large eps, and then, and now you'll see that our image is here, and we can do all the same sort of stuff, left align it, all that sort of stuff. All right. So something that you guys may encounter is that some distributions actually disable a lot of the PostScript functionality. Um, I think usually you can convert fine, but sometimes it really just won't let you do a lot of other stuff. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to, this may not actually end up affecting you in a lot of different ways, but what you're going to do is you're going to go to, um, you're going to go to like up here slash etc slash image magic dash your virgin version. And then if it does have restrictions on what you can do, so basically right here, this is just a XML file. It's not very important, but you can basically see that right here, it gives you pattern, go script. So if you see this, this basically means that you have no no rights to use go script in it. And so you can just comment that out, um, just basically using what it has above it. So dash dash um, right angle and exclamation mark, um, just basically commenting it out. And so now, um, now when you guys save that, you'll need uh, pseudo permissions when you change that just because uh, PostScript can basically run commands. It's, a, it's an entire programming language technically, so that's kind of why there are these restrictions, but I feel like in most people's cases, you don't really need to worry about them. And so now you'll see that we have our image and something that I'm sure you guys would like is to be able to insert screenshots because that's what I use it a lot for. And so I have a quick little um, script. I have a quick little uh, part in my Vim config that allows me to do this in a bunch of different file formats, but let's just do, so I've got this text, and then I just run this command, and I can take a screenshot, and it puts it in my file. So you guys can do this in your editors. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you guys could do it, but I'm just going to go over how I use it. So something that is also awesome about Image Magic is it comes with this program called, this command called import. So I can do import and then no.eps. So what I'm saying is I'm going to run import with the argument no.eps, which will basically make a EPS file with a screenshot in it. So when I run that, it now allows me to take a screenshot. So let's just take a screenshot of the right half of this face. And then now that file is created. So now if I do dot psp 
um, and then node.eps node and run it. You'll see that I now have this little image right here. So I'm sure you guys can see how this can be really powerful. Um, another thing that you guys can do is you can do dot, um, so you can do the same sort of thing. So say I've got node.eps. Now you can actually do ink, so you can do inkscape on node.eps. And then now it'll actually open that postscript file in inkscape. And then I can actually edit it. Um, usually I'll do like some simple stuff, like I'll just draw a couple lines. And as you guys get the picture, and I can save that with Control S, and then I quit. And then I can save that as an FEG if I want to edit it later, but I'm just going to close it. All right, and so now when I run that again, it will have our little edit on there. All right, and that's pretty awesome. Um, so if I remove that, I will run into an error and it won't work. But if I actually do, I can do touch. And now the file exists. It doesn't really have anything in it. Actually, if I do, if I try to open it, my computer basically will have no idea what to do. And it will just kind of try and figure it out on its own, and it will make a mistake. But if I open this with Inkscape, it will now open the file even though there's not really anything in it. It just knows that there's a file there. Now you can actually edit it. So now, just like before, um, you can make a little arc. Uh, this is just a quick little demo. Save that, and we don't want the backup of it. Now, I can insert that little curve that I had. So this can be really useful for math classes. Um, I have shortcuts for a lot of this stuff, like I mentioned before, so I have a shortcut to basically do this is image, and then I have a quick little key binding to basically allow me to take a screenshot, bam, inserted. And there we go, nice and quick. Um, same thing with, I have a snippet, like PS pick, and then I can run the snippet and then do like, uh, temp. Oh. And then it'll open up a new file called temp EPS. And then like, just like before, um, let's just free end something really quick. And there we go. And now we have that temp file. So as you guys could imagine, this is super powerful. I think I've shared more than you guys will really end up needing, but I figured I'd share some of my ways that I like to insert images. Thanks everybody for watching this quick video. Um, if you liked it, please give this video a like if you learned something. Um, if you have any suggestions or any questions, throw them down in the comments. Um, anything else, please let me know. I'd be happy to cover another video in the future. Um, thanks, and goodbye.